my friends, my name is Lindsay and I run the blog Books for Christian Girls and welcome to or welcome back to the little corner of the internet where we talk mainly about Christian fiction. Today it is a book tag which are always so much fun to film and then I'm also going to throw in some winter recommendations at the end of this video. Even though yes, I know February is almost over. Technically that's still winter in my brain so that's why I'm going to be doing the winter essentials book tag that sweet Emily tagged me to do. Thank you so much Emily. I will link her video and channel for y'all down below to check her out. It is so fun to see all the new Christian booktubers coming and joining and I just love seeing like more in my age range as well. It's just such a cool thing. So I will link her video and channel down below for y'all to check out. She's such a sweetheart and she tagged me to do this book tag and I've had my eye on it but I've never done it. I don't think I should double check that before I say that but I don't feel like I've done this tag ever. I don't think I have. These questions didn't feel very familiar. So some of them are just wintry. Some of them are more of that Christmas winter feel, but it's technically still winter in my mind, at least for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. So I think it counts. I'm counting it. It's February. It's cold. Spring is next month for us in Texas. Praise the Lord. I'm so ready for spring. Y'all have no idea how ready I am for spring. I am so ready for spring. It's ridiculous. But I'm very excited about that. Let's talk about these books though. Some of these were a little more difficult than others, so let's get started. Question number one, representing a crackling fire. Who is your favorite cold character who warmed up towards the end? This one was so hard. Why was this such a hard question? I don't know. And then I eventually kind of thought, because I really like the cold characters, like when they're all just like rude and standoffish and all that. And I've seen other booktube friends answer Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice, and I feel like he would annoy me because of his cold, offstanding offstanding is that right the right word him his personality on that I feel like that will annoy me when I eventually read Pride and Prejudice I have not read it yet but a lot of people said him but I'm gonna go with maybe Burndy from The Reluctant Godfather by Alison Tebow I know y'all keep hearing me talk about this book especially in my last few videos but there's a reason it was really fun it's a really neat twist on the Cinderella story about a reluctant godfather and he's kind of a, a grump a kind of a crabby fairy Godfather and it's just very entertaining very fun I hope to I hope to finally finish this series this year at least what's out and go up to publication date of what's out at least but really fun really cute he is quite grumpy and then things happen and it he's still kind of a grump at the end like let's be honest he's still low he, he's not 100% like a sunshine or anything by the end of the book but things change and thaw his cold heart Question number two, representing snowflakes, what is a book that is filled with unique characters? And unique has such a broad meaning in my brain. Are we talking like quirky unique or just different from the norm unique? I'm not, I feel like it could be either way. So for some kind of just quirky out of the norm maybe side characters, Jin Toronto writes those so well, especially in to spark a match. Adelaide was such a fun, unique character in the first book. A, I have it over here to a match in the making. Man, my brain was broken there, y'all. A match in the making, she was a side character in, and now in this book, this is her own. And there are two older men that are kind of like grandparent-esque figures to her. And they were just so humorous and fun. And so maybe them, maybe? I'll go with that. Oh, also the Thorndike and Swan Regency Mysteries trilogy. I'm gonna put the first the book. Uh, the, I'm gonna put the cover of the first book here because I currently have it on loan. My book buddy at my church is reading it, and I checked with, in with her this past Sunday. She'd had it for a week, and she said she hasn't gotten far because she just keeps writing down all the vocabulary words they keep using that are just so fun. And she goes, I have so many, I have to research what this means. And I'm like, isn't it great? And she's really enjoying it, which I'm really excited. And she, because it's a mystery, she can't, and I love Miss Anna Faye. Y'all would love Miss Anna Faye. She is just the sweetest person ever. I love her. And she's been my book buddy for years. So she has read all of my historical fiction except this trilogy and maybe two other books. She, she's a big historical fiction fan. So she always borrows my books and it's just always so fun. But she kept trying to guess like, is this person the culprit? And I'm like, I can't tell you. Is this person the culprit? I can't tell you. And then she's like, I won't read till the end. I promise I won't, because she always skips to the end of books. And I was just like, how do you do that? And she's like, I won't do that for this book. I go, we'll see. 
We'll see. I know you. You might. But anyway, this book series, this trilogy, is so much fun, particularly because of the main girl, Juliet's her uncle, who is getting his own story. If y'all didn't hear me talk about that in another video, I don't remember what video I talked about, but like, beautiful news, great news. So super duper excited he is getting his own getting his own book because he, I think he deserves his own book. He's a mess. He's such a mess. But then also the two uh, scientist-like guys, and more so in the third book we really see them, but um, Renwick, Renwick I think was his name, he, he also deserves his own book. I'm just saying. Like he has main character energy in the sense of just being really unique and quirky and like he has he inherited his family's place, his family's manor house, I don't know what the term is, and there is a poison tea garden. <laughs> I love it! I love it so much. So, yeah, he would fit. I, I, but he's a side character, so like main characters, maybe Adelaide. But for the other series, I'm the side characters were great, and side characters can make a breakup book for me, so that's always fun. Question number three, gingerbread family, which fictional family would you want to be a part of? In all honesty, I really like my family, so I don't really have an answer for like a family you want to join. Um, let's see, I, I really like, I love my family. Let me rephrase that, I love my family. Uh, friend group wise though, and I've answered this before, so I'm going to switch it and answer them. friend group, and that would be the any era manga books, number one, okay? Any of them. And then... I know it's me talking about this series again. Are we shocked? No. No, we are not shocked. But the Guns of the Dogs mystery series, the friend group in this was just so much fun. It's just so loving and you just, you just they're supportive and I just, I want to be a part of either friend group. Either this friend group or any of our mango. Like the Lauren, Lauren's friend group or Maya's friend group, Paige's friend group, the Carrington Spring girls friend group, probably theirs. The Carrington Springs would probably be the one I would pick out of all of her books. <sighs> Lauren's great and Maya's great, but I think I would pick the Carrington Spring Girls, so there you go. Question number four, Blizzard, what is a book that had you confused the whole time? And I would like to say that this Texas girl is so, so happy I've never lived through a blizzard. That's mind-boggling to some of y'all, but I've never lived in a blizzard. That, that's, um, I think that's like gold star worthy in my opinion, but I could give two answers for this. The first one would be Wish Dress by Nadine Brandis, which I am in the minority and the fact that I wasn't a fan of. I'm so sorry to my dear friends who love it. It was high fantasy. My brain does not understand. It's like an error 404 code. I can't. My brain just bloop out. Can't. Nope. But a book I did enjoy that at the same time I was incredibly confused about was The Wonderland Trials by Sarah Ella. It's a reimagining of Alice in Wonderland in like an alternate universe dystopian like setting which I really like the setting but there was a lot of times that you just have the Ooh, this even the second book oh mm. actually I meant to pull the second book for this the looking glass illusion I meant to pull that one this is the first book the second book is actually the very bottom book in a very teetering stack of books that need to go on this shelf so I'm not gonna pull it out but here's the cover they're gorgeous covers both this duology yeah my brain was kind of like I don't know what's happening here but neither did the main girl so I felt a little better about that typically she didn't really know what was happening either so that was a little comforting but it is that Alice in Wonderland wonder madness what in the world is happening and I think I felt it more with book two than this first book so yeah I was I was a little bit lost I'm not gonna lie question number five gift giving what is the last book that was given to you so, not including like books for review or anything, and if gift cards count, I recently bought Southpaw by Tabby E.R.H. I have, <laughs> I have this book on my Kindle. This is one of those things. I, I bought this book for my Kindle, and yet here I am buying the physical edition. I have such high hopes for this book. It's not funny, like such high hopes for it. And I honestly can't even tell you what it's about. A suspicious death at an influent family business unearths a network of secret lies and buried history. Caught up against all of this, against their will, are four individuals. A salesman, an artist, an IT manager, and a house cleaner. As the secrets deepen and they become, um, they each become targets, this unlikely foursome must come together to unravel it all. So it sounds like they have 
puzzles and like suspense and kind of thriller aspects and I've seen snapshots, snippets, I guess would be the proper word of this on the author's Instagram and they've always been interesting to me. It is a bit of a thicker book but I have really really high hopes for it. I hope I like it. I've only heard good things so haven't read it, don't know the content but I'm very, I'm very intrigued in it. Intrigued in it. Intrigued by it. That's the proper word. Question number six, Snowball, what is the biggest book you've ever read? Shockingly, it is not the Lunar Chronicles book for winter because that book was humongous and way too long. It would be a flashback by Shannon Messenger, which is book eight. I think it's book eight. I can't count. I think it's book eight in the Keeper of the Lost Cities series. I'm not going to hold it up physically. It honestly doesn't look that thick. It really doesn't. It's about that. About that big. I have them all up on my bed headboards. Y'all have heard me talk about this before. So they're not really easily accessible to get, especially when I'm filming and I have all um, <laughs> my bed becomes an extended desk when I film all my camera equipment I put on my bed and then I've got plants everywhere. So they're not really the easiest, so I apologize I'm not holding it up. But it's a it's about that thick. It's about eight hundred and seventy something pages. Yeah, that series was a little addicting <laughs> and those page links are something else. Question number seven, wrapping paper, what is your most beat up book? And I've answered this question before for other tags, so I wanted to do something different that maybe wasn't a childhood book, because that's typically what I answer. But I'm going to go with this paperback copy of Kisses from Katie by Katie Davis Majors. Well, she was Katie Davis at this time. She's gotten married since this book came out. I have a hardback, beautiful, haven't owned annotated that book actually though I do need to annotate that book <laughs> but I have a really nice hardback copy this was a copy I picked up at a book, used bookstore and somebody had highlighted and underlined things and I was like oh, okay this is hmm, I can't find any of those highlights oh here's some underlining I can't find any of the highlights but like somebody did those and then so I went through and underlined parts I really liked and then I lent this book out to one lady in my church and then Miss Anna Faye, she also borrowed it and they underlined stuff too and that was totally fine because like this is a beat up copy. So like it's crease and lots, like it's in perfect readable condition. It's just a lot of people have made notes and I just think that's really cool. It's become like, not a little journal, but it's become a very like personal, like at the beginning you can really, there's more notes and whatnot and it was really neat that everybody did that. Uh, if I, anyone ever wants to borrow this book, that I know in real life, they will borrow this version and not my nice hardback. And if they want to make notes and highlight things, that's totally fine because it is a copy to do that. So, yeah, I just think it's really neat to have everyone underline or highlight what they like. I wish everyone would have done a different color or like one did a blue pen, one did a black pen, but beggars can't be choosers. It's still really neat anyway. Question number eight, Christmas lights. What is a book that you own that has many colors on the covers? I'm gonna cheat. I, I'm warning you now, I'm gonna cheat. See all these colors? See all the Christmas lights? I couldn't resist, my dear friends, I couldn't resist. This was a Christmas book I read this past year that I really enjoyed. Y'all have heard me talk about it in recent reads number nine for last year and then my reading vlog about reading as much as I can for 10 days before the end of the year. I talked and kind of fangirled and squeed about this one because it was just so much fun. It's two interconnecting novellas about two best friends and they're very different Christmases. Very cute, very humorous, very fun. I had to go with this one because like look how colorful it is and there are Christmas lights on it which I just thought was very perfect really. As far as like non-Christmas books, I know I have some ones that are pretty colorful but in all reality I was looking and I feel like majority of them stick within like a three to four color color scheme which I thought was really interesting. I find graphic de design and cover design very interesting so I was like oh this is interesting. This could be a video in itself talking about different covers and like that kind of thing. I think I've done a favorite book covers video a long time ago. I ought to do one of those again because it's been a while since I've discussed that. But really, a lot of my favorite colors stick to just a few. A few of my favorite covers stick to just a few colors. And I thought that was really interesting. Question number nine, ice skating. What is a book that had a plot that was all over the place? And I love this question. It's a really good question. But at the same time, it's really difficult. And it almost feels like it could be like a negative notion. Because typically when you say a plot was all over the place, 
that's not complimentary, you know? So I kind of had to think about that. And I feel like that <laughs> makes it hmm, a little more difficult in another way. I would say Winter by Marissa Meyer because we have multiple point of views in that one. And it's just a really long book and lots of things happen. So it could be that one. But then I also personally would say Wish Dress by Nadine Brandis. I know I'm pulling that book out for two questions in this tag. But I struggled really hard understanding that book and just there was a lot of things happening and then you add in the fantasy elements it's I'm not that's not my kind of fantasy unfortunately I'm so sorry my dear friends okay I'm gonna stand up for this next question and that's Christmas tree who is your favorite character of all time people are gonna get sick of me saying this question I already can hear a comment sorry my dear friends I do really like Addie though from the librarian of Boone's Hollow if I had to pick other ones obviously I love all the Aaron Mangum girls because they are fantastic but let's see, where are some other ones I really like? So right where I belong, the main girl was Natalia by Krista McGee. She was great. And then Kara from Starry Me by Krista McGee. She was great. Another Addie, but spelt with a Y instead of an IE, First Date by Krista McGee. Any of the Aaron Mangum girls, um, Krista McGee's Anomaly Trilogy. Thallium Thally, love her. Uh, Adelaide from To Spark a Match. Like, I've got quite a few that it's just like, I think y'all are the best and y'all are awesome. Can we please be friends? That kind of thing. So, yes, I would say all time favorite would probably be Addie from The Librarian of Boone's Hollow. Uh, let's see, who else? Again, any of the Aaron Mangum girls, particularly Paige. Particularly Paige. She was fantastic. I would, I would currently rank her as my favorite Aaron Mangum main girl. She probably would be number two if I had to rate all, all of the main female leads in all the books I've read. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say she's probably number two. So, Addie and then Paige. Question number 11, The Star, what's a book you look forward to rereading every year? And I haven't, there's not really one I reread every year, but for quite a few years in a row, I reread Sleigh Bells by Janice Hanna, and this is a Christmas book. I haven't read it in a couple years though. Like I think I've read this maybe four times at least. I feel like it's probably about that. It's just really cute, very sweet, Christmassy cuteness. It's a historical set in 1916. Really like that time period. There's humor, there's faith content, there's the sweet romance, all kinds of cuteness. Um, other than that, I don't reread really anything every year. I think that's really interesting for those who do. So if you do that, please let me know what book it is and like what's your reasoning? Like do you just love it? Is there always like something to get out of it that like you find things again? Because I know some people do that with classics and I think that's very fascinating and also slightly terrifying that you could reread the book that many times and get something out of it. Like that, like obviously the Bible is different because it's the Bible and there's so many things the Lord can reveal to you at different times. But like for a fiction book, especially a classic book, Maybe because of the language that's used or whatever, that's uh, that's intimidating to this non-classic girl. So I would love to know y'all's answer to that one. Uh, question 12 is a snowball fight and then I'll tag five people. I don't know who's done this and I'm doing this like right kind of at the end of winter, at least the end of winter for me here in Texas. Yay! Yay! I'm so glad winter's almost over! Oh, I'm so ready, I'm so ready, I'm so ready. But, so I don't really know who to tag for this so if you would like to do this one feel free to do it if you want to save it for the winter feel free to do it i'm just going to kind of leave it open whoever wants to do it if you want to answer some of your these questions in the comments below go for it very curious about the star though about rereading the same book every year let me know if you'll have an answer to that one and what was the other one that's right the first question a crackling fire who was your favorite cold character who warmed up towards the end i don't really feel like i pay attention to that unless like they're a grump i don't really feel Feel like I pay attention to that. There's some that's kind of cold and I feel like there's definitely ones I've read but I'm not I'm not sure like they're not coming to mind at least. So that's it for the tag. Thank you so much again Emily for tagging me. I really enjoyed filming this one. These really made me think and that was really fun. I thought for the second part of this video I would do some winter recommendations that aren't Christmas themed. Okay. 
So for those winter book recommendations, I'm not a cold weather person. If it wasn't obvious enough, I don't do the cold weather. And I couldn't really find too many set in winter books. So I'm just going to be giving y'all some books that feel like they could maybe work either based off the cover or it would just be good to read this book with a blanket and a cup of hot chocolate or tea or something coffee for you coffee drinkers but yeah I don't really have too many I've got some on my TBR I had hoped to get to here the past couple of months but I haven't so there's that if I happen to have any after filming this and before it gets posted while I'm editing it, if I happen to find one or two that may work, I'll pop in and add, but no promises about that because I'm ready for spring books. I really am. So this is more so for those who like winter or want more winter recommendations or are still dealing with snow on the ground. And if so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you have to deal with snow or ice or all that's terrible. I'm so sorry. So I have a few books. These are kind of, all, kind of, a little random, I'm not gonna lie. There are different genres, that kind of thing. So let's get started with those. So The Perfect Blind Side and Extreme Blind Side by Leslie Wall. These are contemporary YA, kind of more Catholic fiction than Christian fiction. The author and the characters are Catholic, so we see a little bit of that. I feel like if you're okay with Ginny B. Jones's YA books, then you'll be fine with the content in these books. They're a little more, um, the only way I can describe it is like public school leaning which sounds really weird, but if you're a homeschooler and you've read a lot of books that like, not necessarily are featured around a public high school, but just there's a difference. There's a difference. I don't know how to put it into words. My fellow homeschoolers will understand what I mean most likely when I say that, but they are mysteries. They are really fun. I actually reread these when we had our terrible, horrible, horrific, nasty Texas freeze back in 2021. So I was, I read these curled up by the fire. So that also is kind of that winter vibe. But the main guy in this is he's a teenager, but he's a snowboarder on track for the Olympics. And then this other girl gets involved and a mystery happens and it was entertaining. You know, it's fun to see contemporary YA mysteries. So yeah, there you go. This feels like a really obvious suggestion, but Veil of Winter by Melanie Dickerson. It's in the title, it's cold and snowy on the cover. It really makes me feel like I need a fuzzy blanket. I'm trying to remember what this one is about. I can tell you that this series hasn't been my favorite as I've been mentioning in a few videos, which I hate to mention so often, but it's just not quite the same as her old books, in my opinion. Uh, what was the point of this book? I'm trying to remember. The main girl is a princess being forced to marry, and then we have a young knight who gets a vision from God instructing him to help her on her quest and then she's been okay let's see he arrives finds her near death for days he manages to revive her and then the princess doesn't trust him thinking he was trying to kiss her so was this Sleeping Beauty? What we telling was this? Was it the Snow Queen Sleeping Beauty? Oh my brain doesn't remember. Oh, it is? Okay, sorry. It says at the bottom. <laughs> Read the whole thing. Let's see. It says at the bottom, Sleeping Beauty retelling. So, yeah. There you go. Let's look at what's under the jacket. A nice blue. That's pretty. That's a nice blue. That's all, It's like a dark periwinkle, but less purple. The camera's not really picking it up right. Hmm. It's a little darker in person, I feel like, than what it shows on camera. My next book is a contemporary romance and I'm pretty positive this is on Kindle Unlimited as well and that's Why the Snow by Janice Thompson. This is one of the covers. I'm not sure if this is the current cover. If there's a different cover I'll put it here but this is about Brianna who does not like football at all. Like same girl same and there's reasons to that and I honestly haven't read this book in quite a while. I, I should reread this one because from my remembering it's not it's not Christmassy set, it's more winter. Yeah, she, she lives with her grandmother and it's Janice Thompson. So like the, the grandmother character is going to be just stealing the show and I love it so much. But the main guy is of course a football player and it's set in Pittsburgh. And yeah, that kind of thing. They both have pass. And so the, the little tagline at the bottom is, can God take those pass and make them white as snow? If you like, it's also short, y'all. Like, it's pretty short, so if you need a short book for a reading challenge, you ought to check this one out. The whole series, this was a trilogy. Uh, let's see. It was White as Snow, Red as Crimson, Crimson, Blue. 
I own it. Where is it? Out of the Blue. That's it. Out of the Blue, Red Light Crimson, White as Snow. That's the trilogy. I don't think I did that in the proper order. So this is technically, I think, book two, but it's really cute, really fun, really sweet. It's James Thompson. What do you want me to say? Oh, it also, on this book, it had the reformed bad boy trope done so well. Like, I don't typically like that trope, but it was really, it was really well done in this book and just very sweet and very, like, you could tell he was sincere in wanting to change and we don't have any moments of him falling off the bandwagon kind of thing. So, apple cart. Apple cart? What's the phrase? Regardless, it's really, it was a really good one. I actually, according to Goodreads, reread this one in 21, but I feel like it's been way longer since I read this one, reread this one, so, hmm. I might reread this one towards the end of the year. For a cozy mystery, we have Snowbound by Elizabeth Adams. This is a, this is part of the Secrets of the Mary's Bookshop series, but you can read them out of order. They're by various authors, so sometimes it just works to read them out of order anyway. And this is a cozy mystery where a murder party, like what are those called? A murder mystery dinner party, that kind of thing happens. But then one of the guests goes missing and it becomes not, not a play, not for fun or pretend anymore. Things are happening. No murder, no murder, except for like what's mentioned in the, in the, the acting of the cast members of this dinner party. You know, that kind of thing. That's the only thing, but no actual murder. It was fun. You know, it, it was definitely one of my favorites of the series. Mary felt a little out of character compared to the rest of the books, but it was fun and they get snowed in when this mystery happens, hence the title. So, yeah. My next book is a suspense book and that is Never Let Go by Elizabeth Goddard. This is set in Wyoming, one of those really cold states, and the main girl is a forensic genealogist. So basically, people come to her to find their families and it's kind of like a private investigator, but not quite. And I just thought that whole field was so fascinating. So she is trying to find a baby that was abducted from a hospital like 20 plus years ago and that's brought her to this place in Wyoming. And the main guy happens to be her ex flame, which is not, I don't really like second chance chance tropes either, but this book, it worked really well with that. And he is a former FBI agent, things have happened, and so he's going to protect her and things happen. And I just thought it was really good. I've read the whole trilogy and they're all set in Wyoming, so in the cold winter kind of time period. And I will say this was my favorite of the trilogy. I think I gave it like three and a half stars, and the other ones I gave like three and two. So, hmm. Didn't love the rest of the series as much, but I did think this one was really interesting, mainly because of her job and her trying to find a missing person. I don't know, I thought that was really interesting and it's definitely, it's cold. You can tell she's wearing one of those really like legit jackets that they don't even sell here in Texas. And then my last book is actually gonna, gonna it's gonna be a, an honorable mention, but Double Take by Lynette Easton. This is technically set in the fall. Okay, I know. But there's not really too many mentions, if I remember right, about like fall foliage, maybe like a couple, that, that's it. But look at this cover. This screams winter January to me because of like the fog and the blue. I don't know, y'all. It just feels cold. And maybe that's because it's the suspenseful. There are definitely triggers for this book, such as domestic violence, stalking, PTSD, and panic attacks, because the main girl has recently, and the prologue starts with her nearly being murdered by her fiance, and then we jump, and then she uh, has to protect herself, and so she shoots him, thinks he's dead. 18 months later is where this book is mainly set, and she thinks she sees him following her, but she knows he's dead. Or is he? And so it was really interesting. I don't feel like this was very creepy personally. I feel like this author has books that are way creepier because they deal with serial killers. This does not, but it does have that stalking plot line. So if you are sensitive to that, maybe not for this book, but I would do it as a, maybe a recommendation for older girls that like the criminal justice field. I talked about this in my last recent reads, so I'll put that in the cards and everything, but I'm putting that as an honorable mention. So that was my little stack of winter books. I'm trying to gather them so y'all can see them all. Most of them actually have blue-ish spines, so that's fun. I'm struggling here. There we go. Those are some winter book recommendations for y'all. I'm really not a winter person, and I think I subconsciously avoid books that look cold. I sincerely think I do. I just, I don't like being cold. I don't like any bit of that. So I don't feel like I have any 
winter recommendation historical books for y'all besides the couple that kind of fit in that. Well, Veil of Winter counts. The other ones are all contemporary, so those don't count. I don't feel like, I feel like there's probably some set in winter, but like their covers don't look winter, so I don't exactly remember if they're wintery or not. I know there's some out there in the Christian historical fiction category that are definitely set in winter and you can tell because they have snow or ice or something. And there's one series I'm specifically thinking in my brain, but I can't think what it is. And I haven't read it, so I'm not going to mention it or recommend it or anything like that. But there are a few, but I sincerely feel like I avoid them. I feel like I avoid them. I really, truly do. Because think about it. If it's a historical book with feet of snow on the cover, they are most likely going to spend many sentences having to build a fire to survive. That is not my thing. Like, I never got into the Little House on the Prairie book, so maybe that also has something to do with that. Mm -hmm. Things to ponder. But, yeah, not really a winter girly over here. I am definitely, I definitely prefer summer. So, that's my recommendations for winter book recommendations. I thought maybe I could make this a two-for-one kind of video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. That is a stack of books. That was the tag. I think that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read any of these. Do you want to read any of these? All, you know, my normal questions. But if you'd also want to answer those two questions from the tag or any of the questions from the tag, I would love to hear your answers of those down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you found some book recommendations, whether it be this stack of books or the stack of books from the tag side of this video. It's always fun to pull books from my shelves and make a mess of my bookshelves. It's always fun. That's it for this video though. Thank y'all again so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely lovely rest of your day. I am Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls at blogspot.com where there's a new review every Monday and Friday. I try to post a new channel on this vi- the I post a new channel? No, I try to post a new video on this channel every Friday. Sorry about that. And then I am also on Instagram and Goodreads and TikTok and all the many places to add books to your TBR. That is all my master plan of good, clean fiction. Christian fiction books and all that kind of stuff. So I will see y'all next time. I hope you have an absolutely lovely rest of your day. Bye!